Hello, this is Dr. Marge, and today we will proceed with Class 2 Amalgam Restoration. But before that, let us review our Class 1 Outline Forms. For mandibular molars, if you have a carious buccal pit like this, you position the burr perpendicular to the tooth surface for entry. And you may have an ovoid restoration, circular, or even triangle preparation. Again, the outline could be ovoid or triangle. For the mandibular first premolar, you can have a snake eye preparation. So you just have to follow the mischal pit area and the distal pit area, and then you form two, two ovoid outline form. And this is how your restoration would look like. Okay, just be careful with your mandibular first premolar because mandibular first premolar has a more prominent buccal cusp compared to your lingual cusp. So if you follow our rule from the cava surface margin in your typodont, 1.5 to 2 millimeters, your pulpal floor will be sloped down. Same with your uh, buccal and lingual cusp slope okay why is that so because your pulp horn here is more prominent also in the buccal area okay so pulpal floor follows the occlusal incline of the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp next mandibular second premolar your mandibular second premolar in the typodont has one buccal cusp and two lingual cusps. Okay, so you will have your dovetail, which follows the contour of your proximal surface, another dovetail, and your isthmus, and then your lateral extension towards the lingual. If it carries with extend towards the lingual, then you may make it a compound class 1 cavity. Let me just go back to your mandibular first premolar. If in case the carries would cross the transverse ridge, this is your transverse ridge, then you can connect your preparation just like a dumbbell shape. Dovetail, dovetail, and then smooth, and then dovetail. If the caddies would cross the transverse ridge. Next, class 1 amalgam restoration on maxillary for smallers. Okay. So here, sometimes the caddies would not cross the oblique ridge. Then you just have to prepare the occlusal outline. Like this. If it would cross the oblique ridge, then you have this preparation. If it would include the lingual portion, then you have a compound class 1. Like this one. For maxillary premolars, you have butterfly outline form. This is your butterfly or your dumbbell shape. You may watch our previous videos on how to make a class 1 preparation. In maxillary lateral incisor, very common is the lingual pit carries and you just have to do an oval preparation. If, in case, the caddis extends to the other side, 
then you can make a triangular preparation. Okay? So we now proceed with class 2 amalgam restoration. So in class 2 amalgam re restoration, proximal carries lesion on a lower second premolar. This is our example. Look at the bird position for entry. You have slight lingual tail. Enter the tooth with punch cut and extend distally or the surface where the caries is found along central fissure at uniform depth. So our depth here is 1.5 to 2 millimeters from the cava surface margin. Or in the actual patient, it's 0.5 to 1 millimeter from the DEJ. Okay. Initial tooth preparation. So you always start your preparation on the pit areas. Pit areas. Then you extend to the center. Okay. So that when you make a mistake, this area would be larger anyways. Because of the dovetail here also. Then completed occlusal step. Then you go to the proximal ditch or the proximal box. Remember, whenever you do class 2 preparation, you have to check first, number 1, the anatomy of the tooth. You always follow the anatomy. Number two, the contact area. Okay. You always want your proximal box to be away from the contact area. 0.5 millimeters buccally and 0.5 millimeters lingually. Okay, okay na yun. Okay. If the caddies would extend, you can extend more as long as the margins of your preparation will not be on caries susceptible area. Example of caries susceptible area is your contact area. Next, where position to begin proximal ditch or proximal box extends gingivally to desired level of gingival floor. Take note that your proximal area converges towards the cervical. So the deeper you get, the deeper you get, the greater the clearance or the space with the adjacent tooth. Okay, so if your CI would tell you, or oh, you still have contact on the gingival floor area. What will you do? You just have to lower down your gingival floor. If your CI would tell you, oh, you still have contact on the on the buckle, on the buckle, and then you extend a little bit towards the buckle. Okay. The depth of extra gingival line angle varies with the extension of the gingival wall. Okay. So the deeper you get, the greater is the clearance to the adjacent tooth. And most of the time in actual patients, you have very deep uh, class 2 caries. It, most of the time, it's, it's uh, subgingival. Okay. So here, have minimal extension for letter A, just 0.5 millimeter below the contact area. That's already acceptable if the caries is just minimal. But if it gets deeper, then you can have it moderate extension. If it's really deep, the caries is really deep and has extended into the cementum or root area, then you have gingival margin in the cementum. So it's very important for you to remember 
that whenever you do proximal caries restoration, the the patient does not should not have gingivitis. So you treat first the gingiva, if the patient has gingivitis, before you do the restoration. Okay. The axial wall follows the contour. The axial wall follows the contour of the proximal surface. Okay. For you to have a uniform width of your gingival floor area, in this case, class 2. Facial lingual dimension of proximal ditch. Facial lingual, facial lingual. Facial lingual dimension of proximal ditch is greater at the gingival level than at the occlusal level. So that means if it's greater in the gingival level than at the occlusal level, it's slightly converging towards the occlusal. Again, it's slightly converging towards the occlusal. So to weaken the proximal enamel, you just move the burr toward it. Side of the burr may emerge slightly through proximal surface at gingival floor. So if you make a mistake, the burr will, will have a hole on this area. Fracture out weakened and proximal enamel with your spoon excavator. And then proximal enamel remove. Okay. So by using hand cutting instruments, if the proximal wall is already thin, you prevent uh, injury to the adjacent tooth. Unlike when you use your burr to remove that uh, wall. Okay. During the process of thinning out the enamel, matrix band can be used to protect and prevent marrying of the adjacent tooth. Very common mistake. When you do class 2, the adjacent tooth is already drilled out. So instead of helping the patient, you're creating more damage to the teeth of the patient. And then, when small lesion is prepared, gingival margin should clear adjacent tooth by 0.5 millimeters. So in the typodont, since it's ideal, we work on 0.5 millimeter clearance. Clearance may be measured with the side of the explorer, but more accurately with just the tip of the explorer if it's 0.5 millimeters. Then the buccal and lingual walls in the proximal box area should be out of contact with the adjacent tooth. So when you check here, when you check here on the buccal, there is no more contact in the adjacent tooth. On the lingual, there is no more contact on the adjacent tooth. If you check the gingival, there is no more contact to the adjacent tooth. Next. S-curve or reverse curve. We always place the S-curve or reverse curve in the buccal cusp area. To achieve a 90 degree cava surface angle. 90 degree cava surface angle to protect the tooth during mastication from fracture. Or to protect the restoration from fracture. If that is the case, then S curve or reverse curve is your is part of your resistance form. Again, S curve or reverse curve is part of your resistance form. So the next step is removing remaining undermined enamel with your enamel hatchet on the facial proximal wall. We will continue with removal of infected caries and teen on the next video.